Alright, so let's try the other route. I'm not going to be doing all the narration until the end. do this as quick as we can so we can get back to where the actual ending stuff is. Alright, walk to the right. Can't do it yet. I gotta wait for all these to go by. If you want to see all this, you'll have to watch my other videos from the same series. Um, this is my second run where I do the other path. I will say though again, I guess I can kind of give my thoughts until I get there. Um, this game is very clearly inspired by a lot of different media, but it still does a very interesting story of its own with this. And it's mystery, I mean there's still a lot of vagaries that you could kind of fill in your own thoughts, or someone might consider it also to be complete BS. Um, it all depends. I find it to be interesting. <sighs> Someone who's not really looking for a bunch of minutia might find it to be just a bunch of rambling. But yeah, I um I can see that there's plenty of flexibility for interpretation for the reader. And let's see here, where do I go next? North would be a good chance. Um, the writing in this game is very good. I'm really sad by the two or three glitches that happen uh, with the names and like the lens and some of them is worded wrong on the item thing. And it keeps just having some weird text errors here in just the last three sections, which is sad. <laughs> Ugh, just a second, sorry. But above all else, I really think that the writing is very good. Um, I think that the passion and the artistic stylizations that went into this are all very interesting. And, I mean, it's compelling. I definitely wanted to get through this all the way. I didn't feel like, you know, I just had to do this because... Oh, it is blocked here. Hmm. Oh, so this one's very linear. If you do things out of order, it will make you do them in order. That guy's mask is so funny. I love it with the really, really, really long mouth. Um, I don't really know what the root guy is for. I'm sure there's some reason for it, but I don't really know what it's for. I don't see what it did throughout the entire thing. Unless it's just one of the things you need to activate the vents. But if you'll watch, it does twitch and move around in my inventory. Um, but yeah, the writing and the art is fantastic in this. Um, I can tell a lot of passion went into this game. Obviously, Kickstarter backers wouldn't have backed it eight times for eight different projects if they hadn't seen something in it and the creators definitely put a lot of effort into everything and they put a lot of 
opportunities for the community to join in, which I thought was really awesome. Being able to write little pieces of the game for them, that's really cool. Um, gameplay, again, point and clicks aren't my forte. I can do them. Uh, and there were sections that I did completely without a guide, and there are others that just to make the store or to make my gameplay interesting for the viewer I decided to use a guide to speed it along I definitely don't claim to have been without a guide for the majority of it uh, but sections 3 and 4 of the first one and a large part of 5 and 6 I believe I also did without any <gasps> without any guide. And even there were times where I would have the guide open simply because I wanted it just in case so I could speed it along if I felt like I was taking too long. Um, <clears throat> I still did figure out plenty of the puzzles on my own. So it's not like a super challenging game. It is tricky. There are a few things that are definitely tougher. Um, there are a couple things that I was like, I would not have guessed that if I was not reading a guide. I would not have figured that one out. Um, especially ones where it requires like a certain amount of waiting or things like that. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess not clicking is indeed an option. But those are the ones that would have messed with me. Those are the ones that would have messed me up. Oh yeah, now I can look at what the links said. A faithful companion who kept many secrets over the long nights of research. Okay, so that's everything. Unless that said something. Nope, it doesn't. Okay. We could stop. We could leave him be. It's not too late, is it? What else is there to say about it? Um, it definitely tries to tell like a... Uh, I don't know if this would be considered Lovecraftian. I don't think it quite falls in the... I thought I grabbed the disc. <sighs> My mouse, I swear. I'm going to throw it out the window one of these days. Um, but I can't afford a new one, so it won't be quite yet. And even when I do, throwing it out the window is not going to work very well because I don't have windows that you can open and throw things out of and I'm not going to break my window, especially going into winter. Um, so basically it's all just a bluff. The... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. It's definitely one that speaks to madness and otherworldly horrors. Uh, it definitely has its inspiration from things like um, a very obvious reference to the Wicker Man. There's a very obvious, well I don't know if it's a very obvious, but there is a reference to the Titanic in one of the sections, which isn't really a horror by any means, um, but it is a another thing that is referenced in this. Um, I do feel like it's at least partially inspired by the likes of Lovecraft, but I would imagine that you could say what horrors aren't. Um, I'm not quite sure where, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably some sort of, um, thing that has a 
history of Greek play masks being used as a form of horror, but I don't exactly know what they are. Um, it's possible. But it's one that I wouldn't recognize necessarily like some of them. Um... It's amazing how much detail can be done with such a low resolution. Um, I really do grant a great deal of kudos to the team for making everything look like what they say it is. Um, this game is available on mobile now, which I can see how it would work well on mobile because a low resolution game I think would work just fine on mobile. As I would prefer to have something where you can use a mouse myself, because I don't necessarily like dealing with touch screens. But I can see that resolution-wise, aesthetically, it would not lose anything from being on a mobile device. Um... I guess this speaks a little bit to Scream, the 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 Scream art piece with the mask looking kind of like the duder in that. Uh, that could just be me, but that with the kind of surreal styling that's going on here, I can kind of sense that. I don't know exactly what all inspired them, uh, but there definitely is a lot of effort put into this and in a way of synthesizing multiple different types of story into uh, late 1800s early 1900s kind of time frame which isn't frequently used it's probably more frequently used in horror than other genre but it's not a particularly commonly used time frame for stories typically it is uh, after the 20s and kind of the gangstery thing is probably the earliest you frequently see. Um, there's a lot of uh, 1950s and later, a lot of a uh, ton of 80s and later. That's the most common is 80s and later, sci-fi or early fantasy, like high fantasy. So it's an interesting time frame that's not frequently used, and I'm... I mean, I could be just talking out of my ass there. I mean, <laughs> I could be totally wrong on that. I don't know a lot about games I haven't played, and so it might be a time frame that's more common than I think. Um, but this is... I think this might be the first game I own from this time frame. But it is well done. Um, I, I'd probably give it an 8. Um, maybe a nine. Uh, I'm not completely sure. I'm not particularly rigid when it comes to um, the numbers. I feel like the numbers are convenient and useful for a person who's trying to evaluate things. But I personally am not good at assigning a number to my thoughts on something. Um, but I definitely, it definitely was something that was compelling to me. I felt a desire to continue it, as I said. Um, and I was curious where it was going to go. But this section is probably my favorite because I do love kind of surreal and... I do give kudos to it from the beginning because I do like psychological horror as well. It's probably my favorite type. Um, I'm not big on gory horror. I'm not big on body horror. I'm not big on like that kind of stuff. I'm much more into the 
the situation either leaves ambiguity or leaves a sense of danger that you're not completely certain of, or things where it's the more the psychological understanding of what's happening or, you know, cosmic horrors and things like that, even though I personally have never read Lovecraft, I, I would, but I'm so bad at reading and I've heard it's fairly dense, it's a fairly dense read sometimes, uh, similar to Tolkien as far as levels of detail, and it can be jarring for someone to, or, well, pick it up why does it have to tell you it's an item and then make you pick it up that i guess that's one criticism i have is it should tell you what it is and then just pick it up uh instead of you having to click it again because otherwise sometimes when i'm trying to do things i will leave it and then have to go back and find it Let's see, what else? What else is there to say about this? Um, the company I know is from Spain, because when I was going to try and find information on it, the Game Kitchen's Twitter comes up as saying they are from Spain, and all of the promotional stuff that's on their actual personal page is in Spanish. Um, they do a good job, though. They... It feels awesome from start to finish. All right, so the the ambience. I guess that's another thing I could say is the ambience works very well. Um, it always, you know. One thing that always unsettles me, it doesn't typically always scare me. I can, you know, I can spend plenty of time under the circumstance of being in this, but complete silence gets to me. Um, I don't like it when it's really quiet. I can't sleep in complete silence. If it becomes quiet for too long, I will wake up, for example, if I am trying to sleep. Um, and it has to be a certain type of sound. It can't just be general white noise. It has to be talking or something like that. Sometimes music, although music, the biggest problem I have is I can't get to sleep with music because I tend to try and sing too much. But, um... way that they use it where it is completely silent at certain times or it has just very natural it doesn't seem like the sounds that are put in are just kind of there they seem atmospheric they seem fitting with what's going on here all right now here's gonna be the really fun one What else are my thoughts on this game? Oh, um, I do think the creators need to go back and double check because sometimes the voice color switches um, that happened here in the previous section where there's a name, or it was supposed to be, I think Alexandra was speaking and it did it in white instead. Um, I am surprised I haven't seen Let's Plays of this. There might be ones that I've just missed because I very frequently will go a couple of months without watching any Let's Plays. Uh, let's see here. So what order is it going? Psy. Which one's this one? This one. Litter. 
S. Uh, the puzzles, none of them are that convoluted moon logic kind of thing that you have in King's Quest, which I greatly appreciate because I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I mean more power to you if you have those but it is one of those things that can turn me personally off to a game I um but I found most of these even if I had to look up help to figure out what I needed to do, they did definitely do the, um, they did the job of making it at least something that makes sense. Nothing was just absurd and stupid. Um, you know, like finding the bike chain and finding something to connect the bike chain and making that a thing to charge the back charge the battery it's fine makes sense it works you know thing I mean the things that happen throughout the game feel like they make sense for the world I mean they don't feel like they were just done for the sake of doing something weird and I appreciate that I appreciate that a lot that it actually feels like it's supposed to happen that way like it doesn't feel like they're like what three items can we combine to create a solution that in theory makes sense and works if you have absolutely nothing else to do but what can we do to make the most absurd solution possible and then they'll be like well it's a crowbar and a piece of bubble gum and a balloon and then you'll combine those three things and it will create a monster that scares away the villagers so that you can go through their house and find the key to the padlock but you don't actually put the key into the padlock itself you then put the key into a crack in the door which knocks down a chain which then when you pull that will cause the padlock to snap and you're like See, like, I don't like that kind of super weird, absurd, and that was totally made up, that's not from a game. But, like, when you have that kind of logic, that's not a kind of point-and-click I like. I like one that kind of leads through to a certain process. Um, it feels genuine, it feels like it's supposed to make sense. It doesn't feel like it's there for the sake of being ridiculous. And... I'm fine with ridiculous. Like, I don't mind ridiculous. And some point in click adventures can do it alright. Like, um... Edna and Harvey, I feel like, does a decent job with the kind of absurd things. And, um... The Journey Down, I feel like... Well, it doesn't really do anything too absurd, I guess. Um, but it's one of those where, again, it... I don't know. I... I guess the answer, the the final point to this is I probably won't play King's Quest or Space Quest on this channel. <laughs> um, Alright, well, we're going to continue, and this is where we're going to have the different endings, so I'm going to start narrating here in a moment. Alright, so I'm just not going to go through the curtain this time.
that's this one's there. Yeah, no, Anthony started the group at school, but by the end of his life, he had lost the determination to go any further. Once more, I found myself enshrouded in dense fog. Gradually, the fog dissipated, revealing a busy street in London. The mask that I had worn lay on the ground, melting like wax over the wet cobblestones. Dizzy and exhausted, I wandered the streets until at last I returned home. Seemed very small, as it always does after a long journey. As I removed my coat, I found a feather in one of the pockets. The same one that I had discovered before being engulfed by the black mass of the cement. With a jolt, I realized that it had not been a dream, and I was ashamed at how quickly I had deluded myself into thinking otherwise. I kindled a fire and placed the feather on the crackling flames. As it burned, I heard distant calls of crows in the street. Despite the heat, I shivered. My patient and friend, Jeremiah Devitt, had sacrificed himself. He had accepted the consequences of his friend's actions, and his own as well. He had crossed the threshold leaving the veil through the red curtain of truth and forever closed the last door that had led to those horrors. But I had not found the strength to follow him. I could not take his place. I doubt that I will ever learn the fates of those who remain there, those who are hopelessly trapped in the Violet Hall. My thoughts now turn increasingly to the last mission to which my friend Kaufman entrusted me. I must make sure that no one ever learns what we discovered. So either way, it ends in suicide, I suppose? Hmm. For having two different endings, I'm kind of disappointed that they're so much the same. In both, you burn something. In both, it seems like you probably kill yourself. In both, you're completely regretting everything. I mean, it's fine in so far as it is a legitimate horror ending that it ends in death. Um, if that is indeed what happens there, I could be misinterpreting that. But if that is what happens, it's a completely legitimate ending. Um, but the fact that both endings are essentially the same, I am a little bit disappointed in that. Um, 
I mean, it doesn't take away from the quality gameplay and the quality writing up to that point, but the fact that both endings are practically the same ending is a little bit disappointing to me. With that said, that is the entirety of the main game. Um, there's one thing left, and I will be doing that real quick. Uh, it won't take too long, from what I understand. But there's one more... Um, miniature thing that goes with this. But yeah, good job team in general. I will say, very good job. And I am proud of them for doing as good of a job as they did. Um, it is different in October because I'm playing much more these games that have a more somber tone than what I typically play. Um, I, that's part of why I tried to feed in as many sillier games, or games that were much more upbeat. Like, Monster Bash is definitely nowhere near as dark and grim and depressing. Um, it has all of the tropes of a horror, like, an homage to horror in every single way as far as I can tell. But it really does, um, have a more upbeat tone to it and is much more just a quirky platformer um rebuild one and two and the good ending of three if you can get to the good ending of three which is very tricky um and mostly requires just a lot of patience uh they are hmm they are more optimistic in their final outlook. Uh, the last one not being as much so, since the main ending you're going to see is very much not that positive. Um, I wanted to do Pacifist Undertale, but we just didn't have time. We'll play it eventually, but it didn't end up coming out here. Alright, and then there's this. A mask with no eyes. This is extremely short. Uh, I will be right back.